According to Gerald Massey, an erudite spiritualist and scholar of Kemetic antiquity, the original ancient Kemetic meaning of the term Christ, originally spelled K-R-S-T, is mummy. It's important to note that the original ancient Kemetic written language, known as the Seshmuri Netcher, did not have vowels in its writing system, so the vowel sounds were to be inferred by those reading the written language. The Greek word Christo, which was later anglicized into Christ, derives from the ancient Kemetic word Krest, or Christ, which was spelled K-R-S-T. The written vowels were added later by Europeans. As was already mentioned, the term Krest, or Christ, originally emerged in ancient Kemet, so it was an ancient African term before it became a Greek term. The word Krest, or Christ, spelled K-R-S-T, can be broken into the following two syllables, Ka and Rest. The K sound is pronounced Ka, and it means spirit. R-S-T is pronounced Rest, or Rest and it means rise. Thus, Krest, or Christ, means the rising spirit. The ancient Chemites believed that it was the spirit that rises upward after a literal or psychologically transformative death. Consequently, Massey translated Christ, or Christ, into mummy, an enwrapped and preserved dead body whose spirit is believed to transcend corporeal death. When people define Christ, they reference the Greek term Christos and assert that it means the anointed one. However, the ancient Greeks learned from the ancient Chemites, and the phrase the anointed one derives from the fact that the ancient Chemites would anoint the dead body with oils during the mummification process. Additionally, ancient Kemetic pharaohs, who were considered divine kings, were anointed with oils during their coronation process as well. Jesus was referred to as the king of kings, so like the ancient Kemetic pharaohs who were anointed with oils when they were coronated, and then when they were mummified after death, Jesus was conferred the title of the anointed one, otherwise known as Christ. Christ does mean the anointed one, but it's an incomplete interpretation, as it also means mummy, as Gerald Massey discovered. From an ancient Kemetic perspective, the mummy, or Christ, or Christ, is to be understood spiritually, psychologically, allegorically, and symbolically. The ancient Chemites were astute observers of nature, and they often referred to natural phenomena for metaphorical purposes. For example, when they observed a caterpillar transform into a butterfly, they noticed that it entered into a chrysalis, which is also etymologically related to the word Christ. The caterpillar then underwent a metamorphosis, and finally emerged from its dormant state as a butterfly. When the caterpillar entered into the chrysalis, it appeared as if it was a dead body that was mummified. However, after a period of dormancy, it transformed into a butterfly. The ancient Chemites represented spiritual elevation with creatures that fly. Hence, the butterfly represented spiritual ascension. The ancient Chemites believed that everyone could pursue Christ consciousness on earth, so this analysis is relevant to all of us. With this understanding, it means that embodying Christ signifies undergoing a spiritual metamorphosis and achieving spiritual or psychological elevation. This is the allegorical meaning behind Christ being born in a lowly status, like a caterpillar, realizing his divinity, undergoing tribulations, dying, being wrapped in cloth, being entombed, like a chrysalis or mummy, rising from the dead, and then ascending to heaven, like a butterfly. The story of Christ, or Christ, represents the transition from a lowly status to an elevated spiritual or psychological one after undergoing a metamorphosis, and it's a story that everyone has the capacity to experience, metaphorically speaking. When ancient Kemet was conquered by Greece in 332 BCE and then Rome in 30 BCE, the term Kres or Christ was adapted and conferred upon Jesus. Thus Jesus was referred to as Jesus the Christ in the AD or CE era. Jesus is often discussed as a unique exemplary figure of history. The truth is that his story is about every human being 
who has been endowed with a divine spirit that is yearning to be realized. This is why Psalms 82.6 says, quote, You are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. End quote. Furthermore, in John 10.34-36, when Jesus is being lambasted by his fellow Jews for declaring that he is the Son of God, and he implies his divinity, he goes on to say, quote, Is it not written in your law, I have said you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be set aside, what about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? Why do you accuse me of blasphemy because I said I am the Son of God? End quote. Lastly, Luke 17.21 reads, quote, The kingdom of God is within you. End quote. If one looks closely and properly deciphers the allegorical meaning underneath the narrative of Jesus' life, one has the potential to see themselves in his story and ultimately achieve Christ consciousness. Anytime you experience an epiphany where your mind is transformed and you undergo spiritual and psychological elevation, you have had a Christ moment. We can spiritually and psychologically rise from the dead by becoming mentally transformed through knowledge of self. Hence why Hosea 4, 6 reads, quote, My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge, end quote. In other words, it's a lack of knowledge of self that's destroying people. When Jesus says that those who believe in him will have everlasting life, one interpretation is that if you believe in your own divinity, as Jesus represents the divinity within you, the trials of life will not be able to kill your spirit. In summary, the original meaning of Christ dates back to ancient Kemet, and its connection to the mummy means one that undergoes a psychological or spiritual change, tantamount to death, and then rises above their former state as a new creature that has changed his or her mind and is also aware of the divinity. As the Christmas season approaches, take some time to meditate on the allegorical meaning of Christ. You'll be glad you did.